Peeps, you have arrived at episode number 71 on Next Level Radio. Thank you guys for joining us. We're very excited after last week's podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It turned out to be, hands down, no question about it, the most popular podcast we've ever had on Next Level Radio. Um, That's what happens when you have an interesting story and you get blown up in Afghanistan fighting for your country while we all live these very cushy, cushy lives. Next Level Radio is going to have some um, some changes coming to it. Uh, we have finally started to truly, truly expand, and sponsors are flocking for advertisement, for um, getting their names out there, and so we are actually going to be filtering through that, and my promise to you guys is we are only going to give you guys stuff that is pertinent to what you want. Uh, I, I've been a part of and seen other podcasts that it's anything under the moon, anything that's going to throw dollars at them, and then it just turns into a crappy, unnatural um, podcast with tons of advertisements that don't help you guys, the listeners. And so you know that uh, Iron Chapel and Nutridyne are our mainstays, and they're going to be expanding very, very rapidly. And we're going to start pushing stuff to you guys at the best deals possible and hopefully enhance your guys' lives by listening to my dumbass talk about my life and my struggles and then talking to very smart people. So uh, just so you guys know that we are going to be bringing on a ton of sponsors and we're going to uh, really monetize and press this out because for 71 episodes for over a year and a half done this organically. Okay. No paid ads, no, um, no big, big sponsors. This is all grassroots. I paid for all this stuff. Okay. The camera, $800, the roadcaster, $1,500, the mics, another thousand dollars. This stuff costs money. And luckily I am not even mentioning the lights, But I am very, very passionate about this. And so now we are going to give you guys the best experience possible and push you guys to the furthest extent possible. So first off, our online training. You guys know this. You guys know the drill. Uh, We have three things. We have stacking bodies, looking like a Greek god goddess. We have uh, locked and loaded our performance-based, military-based, athletic-based program that attracts the most people possible. And then we have the roots. And I'm going to stop calling it simple because it's not simple. It's foundational and it's hard. It's very hard. I, I, I've trained uh, very consistently. I can promise you that without missing more than two to three days for over 10 years. And every single year I do the roots program by myself and it absolutely crushes me. I would say it's probably the entry level, something that you need to do before you get on anything else. So all that stuff will be linked in the YouTube, linked in the Spotify. Those training programs put a lot of time and effort into those people, and they are legit. If you're looking to elevate your life, I mean, we're getting close to the new year. I I absolutely hate the new year. We get so many people that come in, and then two months later, last year, I quit taking on those people. I said, go elsewhere. I said, I can see in your demeanor that you're going to be here until February 28th, maybe March 1st. I don't like that. I don't take those people on. You guys go elsewhere. Somebody else will take your money. I won't do it. So um, that's the online training programs. You can go to nl-training.com and you can get everything you need on there. Nutridyne, the medical supplement company, uh, you as this listener get 20% off. Okay. These are medical supplements. These are stuff that uh, address the underlying issues of disease and elevate your performance. So 20% off for all you great people out there. And then that gets us into episode number 71. We are going to be talking very extensively within the next few weeks about regenerative medicine and what regenerative medicine has done for me and thousands of other people around the world. And very specifically today, I'm going to give you guys the intro, the surface level, the molecular level of PRP, okay, platelet-rich plasma. And I will, I'll I'll give you everything you guys need to know, but this is very interesting. And this is something that 
if I would have known about in college and high school, I wouldn't have had five complete shoulder surgery or four shoulder surgeries and a knee surgery. These are stuff that um, allows the body to ignite its own mechanism of healing and allows you to live a better life rather than going under the knife and setting you back six months at the best, a year and a half more like it. So plate the rich plasma. Um, I'll give you the backstory behind it, but here's a very quick intro on what we got dealing with. So it is part of that regenerative medicine. So we've heard about PRP, we've heard about stem cells and the wave that it's taken on in our world. And it's helped so many people, yet it's still one, not covered by insurance and two looked at as, uh, it's very misunderstood. So people think of stem cell and they think, hey, you're taking embryotic, you're taking cells from unborn fetuses and all this stuff. And it couldn't be further from the truth. And a lot of people, that's the narrative that they play in their head. Um, I'm reading the book Unbreakable by Tham Shia. And he talks about the internal dialogue and the internal dialogue that we play in our heads that if you truly think about this, this internal dialogue that we have about ourselves, we, tr- we really don't know who we are, right? But then other people, there are millions, let's say thousands of different versions of ourselves within the internal dialogue of other people. So their version of you is different than what the version you convey of yourself. And so that's, it's, it's fairly trippy, but then you, you, you put that to stem cells and regenerative medicine people have an internal dialogue, an internal narrative about what it is. And they will be standoffish and push it down and not even have it as a viable option. And so I'm here to break that. I'm here to hopefully put a little bit different internal dialogue into your head. And so in that regenerative uh, medicine space, man, my nose is itchy. In that regenerative medicine space, we have a few different things, but PRP does lie within that. And PRP or the platelets within the plasma uh, is pretty much the liquid portion of our blood. Okay. It gives a medium or a vehicle for white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. Okay. And so the significance of this is it ignites the growth factors. It ignites stem cell production in our bodies to have a enhanced and elevated healing response. So The reason why I am having this discussion about this is my history with injuries, okay? Most people that have listened to this podcast or know me, I've been riddled with injuries due to the fact that I I didn't have an off switch, no matter the pain, no matter what, and it's, it's an off switch that a lot of people don't have, that you're willing to go to the ends of the earth, you're willing to completely and utterly break your own body to get to the end goal. And again, I wouldn't, I don't regret anything and I would do it again. However, you do pay for that. And I had my complete shoulder surgeries for those and a knee surgery, quite possibly the worst lower body injury you can have. And that's a rupture of your patellar tendon. And it was a complete rupture with a knee, kneecap dislocation, put the kneecap back and the patella tendon snapped and my kneecap is sitting halfway up my thigh. And so that was my last play of college football. But however, I was, I was riddled with the shoulder surgeries. Okay. So your, your shoulder joint sits like this and you have your labral, your labrum cartilage over the top. But however, I had a very, instead of having a very snug joint, I had a very shallow joint. So that caused hundreds and hundreds of dislocations. When you dislocate, you are going to damage that labral tissue, sometimes rotator cuff. A lot of times it goes down into the bicep. So I had that. I also had when I was younger playing uh, baseball, Osgood Slaughter. So calcium builds up right at the, um, the insertion of your patellar tendon. And it causes a lot of uncomfortable, uh, a lot of uncomfortable, I wouldn't even call it pain, um, just discomfort. And you feel like you're about 80 years old when you are a middle school child. So from there, I, uh, I did rupture that patellar tendon. I do also suffer from patella alta. So there is a, um, a normal, 
um, on the bell curve, a normal measurement for the measurement of how high your kneecap rides. And on both sides of my knees, I have patella alta, which causes the kneecap to ride higher, not naturally being in its groove. And there are exercise prescriptions to help with this. And I now have, again, the human, the human experience is very reactive, right? Instead of being very proactive or very reactive, we have to have an injury, something happen, and then we start doing it. And that's just natural tendencies. So I have been really hammering home the exercise prescription for both the knees of the patella alta. And then um, a very weird instance. I never, I've never got hurt training. I've never done anything. And I was putting together a sore neck squat rack. And if you know anything about sore neck squat racks, they are meaty. They're big. It's over 12 feet tall. It's very heavy. And it's almost impossible to put together by yourself. And long, long story short, one of the arches started to fall and I planted my knee, the arch fell. This is, this is 12 gauge steel people. And it impacted the lateral aspect of my kneecap. Okay. So that outside portion of my kneecap, and it felt like it really deeply bruised it. However, with our kneecap, we have our kneecap here. Our patella tendon rides over the top, very flush. And so what had happened is when that impacted, it did bruise the kneecap. However, it also damaged the patella tendon on my opposite knee. Okay. And so I just kind of took it easy. I didn't do much. I didn't squat for two months. I I, I did a lot of things that uh, um, didn't elicit a pain response. Okay. And after two months, it, nothing got better at all. It actually got worse, and I I had known that PRP was a viable option, um, and I, I knew I had to take the steps because I was babying it. I I had over 10 laser treatments. I had massage. I had chiropractic care. I had the Beamer um, care. I had ultrasound. I had heat. I had CBD. I had PRMs, uh, a, a lot of stuff that... Um, should have helped, but however, the tissue was actually damaged. And so that gets us to putting a bandaid over the check engine light rather than fixing the actual engine. And I got to the point where I knew that something had to be done outside of my power, outside of my control. And so I was at, this is, this is prior to the injury, but I was at the Power Athlete Collective. I got asked to speak at the Power Athlete Collective about uh, excuse me, addiction and business, addiction and success, and how you can use that. And I was talking to Derek Woodski, a very high level um, Olympic thrower, and he brought up an awesome point. And I found this out, and it, it kind of hit me because I, I didn't realize that I was approaching this point. I'm going to be 28 years old, and that's still early in the big scheme of things, yes. However, Aging athletes, um, as we go on, as we keep continue to train, as we continue to um, push the envelope of our performance, we ha- still have the ability to produce the same amount of force as we did when we were in our competitive age. No matter what the sport is, we have the ability, the muscle mass, the motor unit recruitment to produce that force. However, as we age, our, the malleability of our tendons, our ligaments, and our muscles become much stiffer big decrease in malleability. So we don't have that flexibility that we did have in our younger days. And so that's what causes these massive ruptures of Achilles, of patella tendons, of, um, of anything really. And so we have to be very aware of that. And we have to take the steps prior to, to do that. We need to stretch. We need to do yoga. We need to have aerobic base. We need to do all these different things that can play into that. And so he brought up that very good point. And then two weeks later, this happened with my knee. It wasn't recovering. And I decided to go the PRP route. And when we think about patella tendon ruptures or even slap tears that I had in my shoulders, the success rate of return to play protocol, a hundred percent of how you used to play is very minimal. There's not a great success rate for slap tears. And I, I, the research does have some um, 
some points of data that show that there is great success rates. However, this isn't playing how you used to play. This isn't showing reoccurring injury because a lot of the data points, a lot of the studies show up to 365 days. So we need some, we still need some data afterwards, but I'm using my anecdotal stories, my experience as data for this. And that, that's, I, I preface it with that because that's not the end all be all, but this is my experience and then also sprinkling on some data. And so having slap tears in the shoulder, okay? The reoccurring injury is still going to happen. If your joint capsule is shallow, that reoccurring injury is still going to happen. So that I wouldn't consider that successful. The, the success is that they repaired the labrum that the labrum is anatomically repaired. However, if the, if the injury continues to happen, if the injury mechanism continues to happen, I don't count that as success. And so mine, I had zero success until I was done with college football. And so having that low success rate with the shoulders, it's even lower with patella tendon ruptures. So in the 90s and early 2000s, if you ruptured your patellar tendon, you were done. There was no discussion you were completely done. The ability to get your quad to fire, the ability to get the dexterity and the um, stability of that joint was not great. And so at that point, it was, again, the worst lower body injury I could have. And uh, I did not want that to happen to this opposite side. So my father obviously suffers from patella alta as well, because in his older years, I would say 30 to 40, when he was still playing competitive softball, uh, he ruptured both of his patellar tendons. And when you have patella alta, you do have an increased chance of rupture because now the patella tendon is lengthened and in a lengthens position where you do not want it. And then it's also stretched and it's going to not sit in that groove and track correctly. And so you're at a very high chance, again, talking about that aging athlete, my dad was a professional baseball player. So he had this ability to produce force in a very short amount of time. And as the aging athlete happened, as he went down the athletic continuum, that those malleable, the, he had less, less flexibility in those tendons and those ligaments and those muscles. And that caused that snap. And so I, I, I read the writing on the wall right? I was able to kind of see this as we went through and I decided to go the PRP route. And so how does PRP work? And uh, it's something that has been around since like 2011, 2012. Dr. Kovacs, my doctor, who you're going to be seeing a lot more of on the podcast, he has been doing this since 2011. And a lot of people looked at him like he was crazy. However, with his history that we'll get into in the next few weeks, Regenerative medicine has saved his life. And so he has really dove into it. But just now in 2021 and 2020, have people started asking questions because he's had such good success. And he's done it with athletes, non-athletes, and the success rate is astronomical. It's great. And so I decided to go that route. And so PRP uses the concentration that your body naturally produces, the concentration of platelets to accelerate growth hormone to accelerate the healing process of tendons, ligaments, muscles, joints, X, Y, and Z. And so how it works is they're going to take the CCs of blood. They're going to take the, the, the tube of blood from your body. Okay. They're going to put it in a centrifuge and they're going to absolutely just they're The best way to put it is they're just going to spin it down. Okay. Once you spin it down, you get this yellowish, um, oil consistency liquid. And this liquid has concentrations of over two to eight times the platelets that your body would normally have. And so after that, they take this out, they take it out of the centrifuge, they put it back in your body in the exact place where the injury is. So for me, with the patellar tendon, they had to actually go underneath the kneecap into the actual joint to re-inject this PRP. And so with this, 
with this increased of almost two to eight times of platelets, when they re-inject it, your body stimulates a healing response. And when it stimulates this healing response, it's much more elevated than what a normal healing response would be. And so, I mean, the, the research is, is great about it. Okay. The research shows a lot, but it's going to help stimulate the number of reparative cells in the area, but it's also going to help a lot of the research that's out right now has not showed that it's build new tissue for arthritic patients yet. However, it has shown that there has been no worsening effects of the arthritic symptoms. So what they're looking at is more longitudinal, more long-term data that shows that we can actually repair tissue and create new tissue. Because when we get into stem cells, stem cells can do that. Um, and so now we're looking at the differences between those. And so how it worked with me is my right knee, the outside or the lateral aspect of my kneecap felt freaking bruised. And I could touch it, I would push on it, and it was just hurting. Instant pain as I would push on it. Okay. And so I had my PRP injection. I rested for a good week. Um, and I wasn't able to squat for a month or excuse me, two months. I wasn't able to do much lower body. I wasn't able to demonstrate for my clients, my athletes, not much. And that's not like me. That's, that's my thing. If I can imitate it, if I can demonstrate it, you can imitate it. And so we had that done. And within three days, I bullshit you not within three days, the, the localized pressure when I push on my kneecap caused zero pain. The pain was gone, okay? And I, I gave it some time because I truly wanted to see how this was going to work. And it completely took my pain away. Within two weeks, I have not gone up to like a 1RM yet, okay? But within two weeks, and I'm like three weeks out. Within two weeks, I was squatting 450, at my highest, but I was doing sets of 315, 405, 425, and really focusing on speed and really focusing on the eccentric control that I needed. I, again, I was riddled with pain. I couldn't do anything. And within three days, my pain was gone. You find me a modality that allows you to have pain-free movement after two months full of pain. All I'm all ears, but this this PRP does have a lot of promise and look at it on a bigger scale on a 10,000 foot view. You just think about it as the less use of opiates because there is research that I talked about a few weeks ago. There is research that the increased use of opiates can cause longer healing periods. So we talk about having surgeries and massive amounts of opiates. Well, we are delaying the healing process. And so on a big scale, now we can take less opiates and hopefully have a better healing response as we go. And so the rate of return outside of PRP, which is shoulder surgeries, knee surgeries, all that is very inconsistent. So we look at slap tears, less odds of success for overhead throwing athletes, obviously, but it's still inconsistent with non-overhead athletes. And so why can't we give this a shot? Why can't we open up our minds to actually trying a modality that allows our body to do its healing instead of going under the knife and trying to fix uh, something that may not need it, okay? Because most doctors in this world, because there's no incentives for them to do a regenerative medicine uh, modality, there, there's incentives for them to do surgery because you have surgery, you have pain meds, you have all these different things that come along with it that allow you to continue being a patient. Well, Dr. Kovacs injects me and my plan is, and I should never have to go see him again for that. So there's not as much money in his pocket, but he has much better customer service, much better patient care. Okay. And so I will almost always turn to PRP or a stem cell derivative well before, because I'm going to exhaust all things before I even try to go to surgery. I have to be really jacked up to go back and get surgery. And then um, I got asked the question when I was talking about this, what's the difference between stem cells and PRP? 
So you think about PRP, they're taking your blood, they're spinning it down, they're getting a very high concentration of platelets, and then they're re-injecting it. That is just causing an increased healing response. That's not injecting new framework, new cells into that body. And so both stem cells and a PRP are uh, under the umbrella of a regenerative medicine. However, stem cells, instead of going through your blood, stem cells are actually retrieved from bone marrow and fat deposits from your own body. This is the big thing that I was talking about. It's not just fetal tissue, okay? It's not all just aborted fetuses. This is from your own bone marrow or your fat deposits. And so they're going to take the stem cells from there. These are unspecialized cells, meaning they can grow into many different things, many different tissues. And then they replace a variety of tissues in your body. So they can take on the role that you're wanting them to take on. And so the extraction process is much more complicated with stem cells over PRP. The needle's big in PRP. They take your blood, they re-inject it. It's not great. But with, with stem cells, it is a strenuous process to get actual stem cells out of bone marrow and fat deposits. So um, once they get this, these stem cells out, they create a very concentrated solution with the stem cells, and then they inject it back into the problem area. There's a great amount of companies out there, but like BioAccelerator does a lot of stuff with like AJ Ferrari, a lot of big time MMA, NFL, NBA guys. And so they do amazing work um, outside of the PRP portion. But once they do that, they can now lay down new foundational tissue. So instead of just laying down a health response and an increased health response or healing response like PRP, they can actually lay down new tissues. And that's the main difference between all this. And so I... I talk about this because I truly think that this can assist and help a lot of people, a ton of people. And then the next three to five weeks, we're going to be bringing on Dr. Greg Kovacs to talk about his experience, why he got into regenerative medicine, his history with it, and why he thinks that this can be a massive, massive thing for the regenerative medicine side of um, patient care. So PRP does have applications with what I was dealing with, torn tendons, uh, tendonitis, different type of muscle tears, muscle aches, arthritis. This is where the, the data is very small. However, they have, are showing not new tissue rebuild, but um, decreasing symptoms over a period of time. So if we can do that, then we can go into stem cells. We can do these things. And so PRP does have promise with arthritic symptoms. Um, it also with any type of joint injuries and then PRP has got into the cosmetic procedures as well. Outside of actual medical care, it's got into a bunch of different cosmetic stuff as well. And so, uh, if you, if you ever need more information, please reach out. This stuff has helped a ton. Again, I am back to a hundred percent normal, not 80%, not 90%. I am back to a hundred percent doing what I love to do, squatting a shit ton of weight, deadlifting a lot of weight, and helping my athletes through demonstration, being able to show them, not being a frail uh, 28-year-old man. So uh, again, we will be bringing Dr. Greg Kovacs on the podcast multiple times to talk about how this can help you guys. This is just the surface level, getting your brain thinking about it, because I want you guys to ask questions. I want you guys to reach out because Instead of living through pain, there is an alternative. We do not have to live through that or we do not have to go under the knife. So reach out, ask questions, head over to at coach underscore Wartman DM, slide into those DMs. We got nl-training.com for all of our training and all of our online programs. And we will see you guys next week, hopefully with Dr. Greg Kovacs. And you beautiful people have a wonderful day. That is it for Next Level Radio number 71.